Hi friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we have to discuss about T clip lock to D clip lock conversion in digital electronics course and DLD course and STLD course. If anybody wants, please refer that uh, remaining clip lock conversion videos in my YouTube channel called Dibbela Srinivasarao and go to the playlist called DLD and STLD and Digital Electronics course. Now in this video, how to convert T flip flop to D flip flop. First, we have to follow five steps to convert T flip flop to D flip flop. In the first step, we have to identify which flip flop is source flip flop or are available flip flop and which flip flop is a required flip flop or a desired flip flop. Okay, whatever the flip flop we are given, that flip flop is called as available flip flop. Here, the available flip flop is T flip flop and the required flip flop is D flip flop. Okay, so this is the first step. From the given problem statement, we have to identify which flip flop is available flip flop. Whatever the given flip flop, that flip flop is called as available flip flop. So the available flip flop is T flip flop. Whatever the desired flip flop, that flip flop is called as required flip flop, that is a D flip flop. Next, second step is construct the characteristic table of the required flip flop. Here, what is the required flip flop? That is a D flip flop. For that one, we have to construct the characteristic table. Okay. So, to construct the characteristic table, so we have to require, so in the D flip flop, what is the input? So, D is the input. So, D input is called as external input. Okay. Here, the required flip flop is D. So, in that D flip flop, what is the input? That is a D. That D input can be called as external input. So, external input of the required flip flop is D. Next one, what is the present state of the flip flop? So, the present state of the flip flop can also be called as previous output of the flip flop. The previous output or a present state of the flip flop is denoted by Q of T. Then, what is the next state of the flip flop? The next state of the flip flop can also be called as present output of the flip flop. The present output of the flip flop is denoted by Q of T plus 1. Okay, so these three columns represents the characteristic table of the required flip flop. Okay, in the characteristic table, what are the components are there? So, D input and the previous output of the flip flop that is called present state of the flip flop. It is denoted by Q of T and the next state of the flip flop that can be also called as present out of the flip flop that is denoted by Q of T plus 1. These three columns represents the characteristic table of required flip flop that is a T. Okay. In that characteristic table, first two columns can be considered as input columns. So that is a D column and a Q of T column can be considered as input columns. With the two inputs, how many number of possible input combinations we are getting? So that is a 2 power 2, 4 possible input combinations we are getting by using this two inputs G and Q of T. So the four possible input combinations are 0, 0, so 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So these are the four possible input combinations. Okay, 
for each and every possible input combination we have to find out the next state of the d flip flop or a present out of the output of the flip flop okay so here d value is 0 and q of t value is 0 q of t plus 1 value is 0 next d value 0 q of t value 1 then q of t plus 1 value is also 0 next one d value 1 and q of t value is 0 q of t plus 1 value is 1 next one d value 1 and q of t value is 1 then q of t plus 1 value is 1 whatever the d input values are there that input values can becomes the q of t plus 1 outputs okay so here 0 here 0 here 0 here 0 here 1 here 1 here 1 here 1 so whatever the d values are there that d input values can be obtained as q of t plus 1 values okay now once we are constructing the characteristic table of the required flip flop then we have to construct the excitation table so excitation table contains last three columns q of t column q of t plus one column and this last column this last column contains the uh, what is the output what is the input here the input is excitation table is constructed for the available flip flop so step three is construct the excitation table of available flip flop here the available flip flop is a t flip flop for that t flip flop we have to construct the excitation table so we have to find out the excitation table for t flip flop in the t flip flop the input value is a t so that flip flop inputs of the available flip flop is t in the t flip flop what is the input is the t is the input okay so to find out the uh, t to find out the t value so q of t and q of t plus one columns consider as input columns here q of t column and q of t plus one column consider as input columns by using that two input columns we have to find out the t value okay so here q of t value 0 and q of t plus 1 value is 0 okay so both input values are 0 so then t value is 0 here q of t value 1 q of t plus 1 value is 0 both input values are different then t value is 1 next q of t value 0 q of t plus 1 value 1 both inputs are different then t value is 1 next q of t value 1 and q of t plus 1 value 1 both inputs are same so then its value is 0 so in the t excitation table of t flip flop both inputs q of t and q of t plus 1 contains the same input values then t value becomes 0 if q of t and q of t plus 1 columns contains the different input values then so t value becomes 1 okay so the last three columns in this table represents the excitation table of available flip flop the available flip flop is t flip flop so the last three columns represents the excitation table of t flip flop first three columns represents the characteristic table of d flip flop okay if anybody wants characteristic table of d flip flop and the excitation table of t flip flop please listen the previous videos for better understanding of characteristic table and excitation table okay now so that is a step two and step three is completed so this is the step two and this is the step three then we can go for step four in the step four we have to find out the boolean expression for t okay to find out the boolean expression for t we have to use the carnot map which carnot map we have to use so here 
to find out the boolean expression for the available flip flop t first two columns can be considered as input columns okay so in that input columns two input variables are there d and q of t so that we have to use two variable corner map okay so find out the boolean expression boolean expression for t using two variable carnap map using two variable k map okay so in the two variable carnap map so two input variables are there that two input variables are d and q of t first two columns can be considered as input columns in that input columns the two input variables are d and q of t so d value can be taken as horizontal side and q of t value can be taken as vertical so d contains either zero value or one value q of t column contains q of t variable contains either zero value or one value now to find out the boolean expression for t using two variable corner map consider the t column in that t column where the ones are present okay here one is present the corresponding input combination is this one d value 0 and q of t value is 1 so this is the d value 0 and q of t value is 1 so d value 0 q of t value is 1 so that we are placing 1 next one here one is there the corresponding input combination is d value 1 and q of t value 0 so d value 1 and the q of t value 0 we are placing 1 so here two ones are there but two ones are not adjacent because they are in diagonal position so that each and every one can be considered as a single one singleton so there is no possibility of forming a pig so what is the expression for uh, t so here this one means 0 1 plus this one means 1 0 so here d value 0 means d bar and uh, q of t value 1 means q of t plus d value 1 means d and q of t value 0 means q of t bar so this is the boolean expression for t okay once we are constructing the boolean expression for t now we have to draw the circuit diagram draw the circuit diagram for drawing the circuit diagram first we have to consider the available flip flop that is a t flip flop for that one we have to draw the block diagram so block diagram of t flip flop contains one input variable that is a t and two output variables so that is q of t and uh, q of t bar so one input and two outputs then for variable t what is the input we are given the inputs are given by using this boolean expression so i am taking so d input this is a d input so d into q of t bar so this is q of t bar this is a d so now i am taking this one and this one this is a d and this is q of t bar so these two inputs can be send to one and gate so d and q of t bar these two inputs can be send to one and gate next one d bar into q of t so here so this is d bar so d bar into q of t so now this is a q of t so this is a d bar and this is a q of t 
So these two inputs can be send to one AND gate. Then these output and this output can be send to one OR gate. So whatever the output is there, that output is connected to T. So this is the circuit diagram for converting T flip-flop to D flip-flop and this is clock. Okay. So this expression is D bar into Q of T. This expression is D into Q of T. These two AND gate outputs can be send to R gate. So finally we are getting D bar into Q of T plus D into Q of T bar can be send to T input. It produces two outputs that is a Q of T and a Q of T bar. So this is the procedure we have to follow for converting T flip flop to D flip flop. Thank you. Thank you one and all for watching this video. If you like this video, please click on the like button and click on the bell icon to get the future updates in my YouTube channel after subscribing my YouTube channel. So, Divvela Srinivasarao. If you have any doubts, please put your doubts in the comment section. I will clarify your doubts. Please watch the playlist of Digital Electronics and DLD and STLD course. Thank you. Thank you one and all for watching this video.